I'm working on Dig Dug today and I've got a ton of stuff to get done because I have just over a week before this truck needs to be a resurgence automotive to get the paint done. I'm gonna start at the bottom and get done all of the stuff that's gonna be covered up when I get the bed back in here. All those little things that are half done and undone, I need to get all the way done. The brackets for the trailing arms are just tacked to the frame right now. I need to pull the trailing arms out so I don't burn them up and then weld those in all the way. All the links in the rear need to come out, so I'm gonna pick up the back end of the truck. So I got a little tab there and a little tab right there. And when you line them up, everything fits together so good that it welds really, really nice. So these trailing arm brackets are attached really, really good, but only to the bottom of the frame. So I'm gonna build some triangle brackets that'll run up the side of the frame and make that attachment point way stronger. All right, something like that is how I want this to fit. I'm doing a little old school CAD work today. If you haven't been following along, that's cardboard hated design. So I'm just gonna cut out two of each of these. I'm using eighth inch steel because that's the thickness of the frame. So I don't really see any point in going bigger than that. I still see a lot of questions about what blade I'm using on this saw, and it's just a Makita metal cutting blade. I sometimes use Diablo blades, just whatever's cheapest. It's not really the saw blade. I mean, it has to be a metal blade. It is the blade, but it's not the blade. It's the saw. This saw spins at half the speed of a wood saw. Here, let me show you really quick. So this is a wood cutting saw. It's got a different blade on it. It's made for wood, and it spins really, really fast. This is a metal cutting saw and it's got a metal cutting blade. It looks really similar, but it's been half as fast. It probably just looks really, really fast on the camera, but about half the speed of that saw. And that's what makes the teeth live a long, long time. You also have to be nice to the saw and not ram it in there and chip the teeth off, but you can get I don't know, hundreds, thousands of feet of cutting out of one of these saws. They're really handy. But it's a different saw, it's not just the blade. Somebody thought I put this blade on backwards? It just has a, looks like a tooth going the other way, but it's not, the carbide teeth are going the right way. If it was on wrong, it wouldn't be cut steel. I tacked these together really quick so I could go line them up on the frame and figure out where I need to clean up and paint.
All right, I think those triangles made it a lot stronger. I had somebody asking me why sometimes I chop out all the parts with that little saw, and sometimes I draw them up and cut them out with the plasma CNC cutter. And the answer is because sometimes the parts are really simple. Like if they're simple shapes, like a triangle or a square or a rhombus, if it's a polygon. If it's a polygon, like I cut it out with a saw. If it's complicated and it's like artistic and it's got holes in the middle somewhere, then I'll usually draw it up and cut it out on the plasma CNC table. If it's really complicated and it has to be really precise, then I use SendCast Send. The next thing I need to finish up is this cross member for the transfer case. I built it, but I didn't have one of the weld inserts, so I didn't put those on in the back. And I actually need to switch out this adapter between the transmission and the transfer case, and I'll show you why and I never welded down this mount on the cross member, so that needs to get done too. The new transmission I'm running in this truck is electronically controlled, so it needs a vehicle speed sensor so it knows what to do. So I called the guys from Advanced Adapters and they got me this adapter that has a spot for the vehicle speed sensor right there. And it's a little shorter, so they said if you combine that with this other GM adapter, it'll be the same length as the one I have. And that's this one that Angela painted the other day. So I'm gonna pull that one out. I'll put these two together. I'll stick it in there with this reluctor ring. It's got these little teeth on there. So the vehicle speed sensor can count those as they go by. And then all the brains should work and it should shift right and still be really strong. I've got six of these bolts I need to get to up in there and then it should back right out. I think I can get this last bolt by reaching down through the hole for the shifter. Got it. All right, that's all the bolts. This whole thing should shimmy off of here now. Oh, there it goes. this is it and this is the adapter that I need to swap out for the two new adapters. I think I've got everything I need here to put this all back together. I'm just gonna start reassembling things for the final time. So the sensor is poking in right here and this reluctor wheel is going to be attached to the shaft inside and it's going to spin and that magnet will count each time one of these teeth pass by. So I'm going to go install this right now on the back of the transmission. So here's the output shaft and that's going to sit right in here like that. There's a couple little Allen set screws on the side. I'm going to tighten each one of them up. Tom said he needs some steel, so I'm gonna head out and grab some. He says I need duct tape, so I guess I'll figure out what that's for when I get there. I'm headed to Schultz's. Uh, I don't know what he ordered, but I'll find out when I get there. Hey, I'm here with Rowdy. He just asked me an important question. So how did you get roped into being the errand girl? Well, I told him I should have screwed up a little bit more last time because now I know how to do it. I think it's gonna be my job from now on. <laughs> so Rowdy will probably be seeing more of me. Lucky you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, Angela just got back with a steel and that's perfect because that's exactly what we need for tomorrow's project. It was just what I was gonna order anyway. Oh, perfect. <laughs> This transfer case has a huge output shaft because it was built for the wrecker. I'm gonna put this flange on the back now and I'm gonna glue it in so that it never leaks.
I took off the front yoke because it's a little rusty. So I'm gonna paint that one up and I'll get that back in another day. Before I put this in the truck, I need to fill it with gear oil, both the doubler and the transfer case. And it's a lot easier to do while it's not in the truck. So this takes three quarters of a quart of gear oil, which is three cups. And this is the only thing I know of at our house that I can measure cups with. So I think Angela would be okay with me using it because she'll understand this is an emergency. I'll just slip it back into the dishwasher too when I'm done. I don't think anybody will even notice. Okay, three cups gear oil. transfer case takes two and a half quarts and I came up with this contraption for my filler because they're kind of hard to get you know the fluid down in there we'll see how it works the paint on my front flange is dry now so I'm gonna install it before I start leaking all the fluid out of my front output shaft I got one quart to go. These are made so that you just fill them until it starts to come out the top hole. But when you reclock them, the top hole is really low. So I'm trying to get two and a half quarts of fluid into this. And I tipped it sideways so it should all go in. Then I'll plug it off and then I can tip it back. Two and a half quarts is too much for it when it gets clocked up. It might puke fluid out of the breather hole here, but it'll probably just puke fluid until it reaches a nice happy level and then it'll stop. Okay, this is ready to go back in. The transfer case and those adapters are all bolted together now. I've got a little welding I gotta do still on the cross member here. The transfer case mount welds to this and these weld adapters, or these uh, weld nuts, I didn't have enough of them when I put it together, so I have a few of those to install as well. I need to get right in here. I gotta weld to this weld nut. It's kind of tricky to get back in there, but I should be able to weld most of the way around that. That actually went fantastic. I'm gonna try and get up in here now and weld the transfer case mount to this cross member. It's time to get this cross member out. Right now everything is supported with jacks, so I should be able to drop it straight down and then I can finish welding everything up on it. The only thing holding up this cross member is that transfer case mount right now. It's really sticky. So if I pry it out, it ought to just drop down, but I don't want to break the tacks on the weld. Ah, there we go. All right, there it is. So there's a couple little welds need to be done different spots and then I should probably paint it and then put it back in. While I'm down here and I'm suited up, there's a little bit of welding I couldn't get to with that cross member in, so I'm gonna do that really quick. All right, I got this cross member out and I've got it on the bench here. I pulled the bushings out of that little transfer case mount. I didn't want to cook these polyurethane bushings. So now that it's on the table, I can weld it up really, really strong. There, there, there.
All right, I'm setting up to paint this thing and I'm gonna use this POR15 top coat. It's a direct to metal paint. There's no rust on this, so I don't need to use their rust preventative. I've never tried this before, so I'm gonna give it a try and we'll see if it brushes out as smooth as the rust preventative paint does. While I've got a whole bunch of stuff removed, this is a great time to pull out the back axle and finish up all the welding that there is left to do on it. So there's a bunch of spots left on this axle that I need to finish. I've got these lower link brackets, they need to get welded up. I've got uh, this upper link, I got a little bridge I wanna make between them. There's a spot right here between this truss and the axle housing I wanna weld up, and there's another one on the back side. So I'm just gonna work my way around and keep hitting all these little things and finish them up. This little piece that looks like a moon is gonna fit right in here. I wanna reinforce this section right in here. So I'm gonna cut this plate and then I'll get nice big long welds all the way across this. I laid a whole bunch of really hot beads down on this side and got that piece locked down really good. On the other side, I'll make a little cardboard template, cut a piece out of steel, and then try to do the exact same thing. Cut it down this way, like a quarter of an inch. Oh yeah, that's gonna weld in there beautifully. Okay, this is the plate that I've built, and I'm just reinforcing this area that I've already welded in. I'm just adding extra weld between this truss and the axle housing. Because this is cast iron, it likes to be welded really, really hot, and I'm just gonna weld the bejeebies out of it. What are those greasy looking caramel colored weld things? Let me show you. So Angela is talking about these little shiny brown spots and they're actually silicone that's put in the weld wire intentionally. When it's in a liquid form, it grabs all the impurities in the weld and it floats out to the top and then it can just be chipped off. I gotta stop right here for a minute because I've got a WJ parked on a lot that we need to get cleaned off. So I'm gonna go pick it up and I'll take you along with me. The WJ is parked just a couple miles away and it doesn't run. So I'm gonna go pick up Peyton because I need a driver. And we're just gonna try and tow it back to my place and get it started. I got Peyton with me now. Angel made you some snacks. Yes, and I'm starving so these are gonna be great. Perfect. Okay, we'll go find that Jeep. Angela is amazing. If you know her, you're lucky. Yeah. All right, let's check this Jeep out. How dirty is it? 
It's not bad. You've been in worse. There we go. Did that key work? Yeah, I think so. Steering's good. Uh, All right, I'm gonna try and hook up a rope. Is this stronger than a chain or is a chain stronger? Well, this has stretch to it, so it's not gonna be, it's not gonna shock load things. So this probably isn't as strong as a chain, but it's gonna be way stronger for your vehicles. It's not gonna break parts off of your truck or the car you're pulling. All right, this doesn't have any tow hooks, so I'm gonna have to go down around the axle. I know they're everywhere. It's spooky season. Okay, we're hooked up. You wanna jump in and drive? Let's go. Do I need to give you a little talk about not running over the rope? Yes, please, I've never done this before. <laughs> okay, don't run over the rope. Okay, Let's go. So we're gonna make a big loop around and then you kind of drag me, drag the brakes. When we come to a stop, okay. um, you stop and drag me to a stop. Okay and then you'll never hit me. All right, this WJ looks like the other one, but it's not. This is a 2004, that one was a 2002. It is red and it does also have a bad transmission. Well, it looks like he made the turn and the brakes are working good enough that he's not running into me, so we should be okay. I just got one more WJ over at that lot to move. And that last one has a torn up ball joint and broken knuckle. So it's gonna be a little bit trickier. We'll figure out something though. You did great, man, thank you. It was really hot. <laughs> you look like you were cooking in there. Let's get you a drink. All right, thanks man, appreciate it. Big stop, thanks for the meatballs, cheese balls. See ya. A little maintenance on this WJ because I've never changed the oil on this and it has a little bit of a lifter tick. So we're gonna pour some sea foam in here, drive it for a little bit, change the oil, and see if we can make that go away. I'm just gonna kind of guess about six ounces. All right, Bridger's home for the weekend, so he's gonna put a few miles on this thing and then we'll change the oil and see if it sounds any better. I can still hear it. We'll see if this cleans it up or not. I've got this axle pretty well cleaned up, but there's one more thing I wanna weld onto it. These brackets are gonna see a lot of force downward because I've got the trailing arm set up. So I wanna build some little gussets to make it even stronger so it can handle all that weight. So I went in on AutoCAD and I drew up a little part and I'm gonna fire up the CNC plasma table and cut those out really quick. All right, here's my brackets that I've drawn up. I made one for each side, so there's two different versions. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you'll get to watch it cut them out. Bridger just walked in while I was cleaning up the part and he has a big announcement for me. I'm naming the red WJ. His name is Kevin. Kevin's reliable, but nothing special. Just, just an average just Kevin. WJ. Mm -hmm. So we're not gonna build it up, we're just gonna drive it. Yep. Okay, maybe the other one we could do a little something more wild with, mm -hmm. but this one's just Kevin, I guess. Yep. If you have a better name, let us know in the comments. Kevin's gonna be hard to beat. Yeah. All right, you need to go put some more miles on Kevin so we can get our oil change in. Sounds good. These gussets are ready to install, and I know they're just tiny, but these little things add a lot of strength to these brackets. It'll fit right down in here like this. This axle's ready to go in now, but first I've got Carter coming here. He's the one that we worked a little trade for 
reupholstering the door panels for some tuning on his Corvair. And I think he's got his Corvair with him. So I'm gonna try and tune this thing a little bit. He's got a fuel injection system on this and it is a super cool car. All right, I'm plugging in the laptop. He's having a lean issue. It's running a little lean. They swapped injectors. So I'm gonna see if I can add some fuel with the tuning. And if we can't, then we'll go back to some bigger injectors. All right, you're not running really lean right now, but let's drive a little bit and see if this leans out and we'll just watch. All right, we're just cruising around, letting this computer do what it does. It's just tuning this engine as we drive. And I think the map, the fuel map, just might not have been tuned in that good. That might just be the whole problem with the thing. And if we get a really good map on here, then it'll drive good and no more backfiring. Won't run rich when it's idling or cruising around town. So we're gonna keep doing this for a little bit and see how it works out. up the hill again and I'm going to watch the ignition this time. All right, we're back from all our cruising around. We made a bunch of adjustments. I didn't tweak the ignition because when we add enough fuel, the detonation went away. So I think we're going to be good. This thing's a runner. You going to take it on a big trip here? Yes, I am. Awesome. That's what I wanted to hear. I hope well, you enjoy the heck out go, of this car. Go towards uh, sea level. So, but, uh, right on. Anyway. Okay. Well, thanks for coming by, man. Yeah, yeah thanks for having, helping me out. Absolutely. All right, I'm back working in the shop. Carter's Corvair is driving better than ever. I'm gonna get that cross member I was working on installed in the truck, and then I'm gonna put this axle back in. Now I just got to tighten everything up and this is ready to go. The cross members installed for the very last time. I think I'm good now to undo this strap. Here we go. Oh, that just came right apart. Okay, now I can drop the jack. Oh, there it is. Okay, drivetrain is in. I'm gonna pull all this junk out from down here and then I can install the axle. Bridger's home from school for a couple of days and he's my WJ expert because he's broken more of these things than anybody. What? Were they gonna break anyway? Yes. But they didn't break anyway. They broke a very specific way and that was with you at the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so he's gonna help me get this one up and running again because he knows what to do. So he's gonna do an oil change really quick today. Maybe we'll look at what else we need to do on this thing. It's definitely dusty, but it's got some life left in it. Got the oil draining out the bottom. We shifted the pan so I can get out the filter. So we're gonna do that now. There it is. This is the new oil filter. My dad said I have to oil the O-ring and then we're gonna put it back into the Jeep. Time to put in the oil plug? Yes. Or the drain plug? Yep. Tight it up so that it'll never come loose on its own, but not so tight that you strip the threads. Okay. Um, we're gonna put in the new oil. It requires six quarts, and one of these is four, so it's one and a half. We got all finished, and we're gonna check the oil to make sure it's where we want it to be. It is good to have a WJ expert. Did you run it for a minute first? Yeah. Good idea. And they're sideways on these, so you can't do it before. How's it looking? Good. I think you're right there. Okay, this thing's done. 
We'll see if it runs any better. It had a little bit of a tick and we put in that sea foam. So when we fire it up and get it running for a while, we'll see if that goes away. The bolts that go on this top bracket, they are really close. They will hit each other. So I need to trim them down a little bit so they're just the right length and they barely stick through enough for a nut. All right, let's see how I did. Oh, oh, that's nice. You got a tiny little gap between them. That should be perfect. All right, this axle's in place. I still need to attach the drive shaft to hook it up to the transfer case. And I just got drive shafts from Adam's drive shafts and they are gorgeous looking. Let me show you really quick. Right here, check this out. This axle shaft has a 1410 CV joint and a 1410 U joint on the other end and heavy wall tubing. This thing is a monster. When you need axle shafts for your off-road truck, check out adamsdriveshaft.com. Okay, I'll find a spot for that. But right now, let's try to get this drive shaft in there. The yoke on my rear axle is drilled and tapped for the strap style U-joint holders. And I wanna drill those out so I can use these U-bolt holders because I think they're stronger and I think they clamp the, the cap of the U-joint better. That yoke should work now and this is ready to go in. The axle's in and the drive shaft's in, so it's time now to move on and get the rest of the floor and the bed figured out. I'll probably use 14 gauge steel back here where the gas tank's gonna sit. I think I'll do wood in the middle section here in the back because I had wood in here before and I think wood looks cool. I'm gonna go design this and start chopping up the tubing. I need to build a framework that all of the skins and panels and wheel well pieces can attach to. I'm gonna start up by the cab where the gas tank goes and then work my way back. All right, gas tank comes out about 20 inches, 34 inches to the outside of the frame rails. These are the pieces that I'm gonna to use to build a little frame and then I'll take that over and weld it into the truck bed. All right, this piece is gonna fit in here about like this. There's gonna be a couple more braces for the gas tank to attach to, but that's about where it's gonna sit. I need some pieces to brace it in and get it in the exact spot, then I'll weld it up.
I got that first little frame installed and I'm just gonna keep building back from there to the very back of the bed and then I'll start figuring out the sides and the wheel wells. I think I need to chop out this piece right here. We're gonna put in something new that'll catch the bottom of the wood that'll go in this back section. So I'll cut this out and then figure out what's gonna replace it. I'm making a piece that's gonna fit right back in here. I got a little chopping to do to make it fit around some of these parts. This thing's starting to get really solid and I've still got some side pieces to add in. So it's just gonna keep getting better and better. All right, that piece is fitting really good. I went and ground all the mill scale off the back of this because these pieces that I took out, the mill scale had just corroded and rusted like crazy. So I'm gonna hit this with the weld through primer. I'm gonna hit this with the weld through primer and we can get this guy in. Okay, this one's in, it's still hot. I keep burning my belly when I lean over here. I'm gonna put another one right across here because I'm gonna have a tire sitting back here. And these big tires are heavy. They're like 100 pounds with a wheel on them. So I'll tie it into the frame and this so that everything is just really, really solid. And then I'll make some other ones that cross out over here and the fender will wrap down into those. That way the fenders are tough and I can stand on them and they won't be all wobbly. Okay, it's coming together.
that's gonna fit right in there like that. Just need to keep it nice and flush and then tack it in. All right, it is getting late and I need to stop here. I have been grinding out here for days and days. I don't hardly leave my property here. I go inside to eat and use the bathroom and then I'm back in this shop working because I have to have this next week to Resurgence Automotive. I've got days to get it there. So I gotta be done here. I gotta go to bed and get some sleep. I will be back at it grinding all next week trying to finish this up. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Okay, let's look at the other one. This one's huge. We're gonna need a ladder. Or a scissor lift. Tell me if it's gonna fit. 